In all of Tekken's long, storied history, there is no character more intricate, more delicately complex than Yoshimitsu. The bionic space ninja is unlike any other Tekken character, possessing a sword, a plethora of unblockables and evasive moves, the fastest launcher in the game, and such a unique style that in later games, he's barely playing Tekken, he's playing his own game. While Yoshimitsu is stereotypically known as one of the consistently worst competitive characters in this series history, its potential lies deeper than a tier list can judge with a single letter. Yoshimitsu is like the Gyarados of Tekken. It takes a lot of flapping about while you're trying to learn him, but masters of the character are a raging monster that can be near impossible to stop once he gets going. So, let's dive deep into Yoshimitsu's bag of tricks and find out just how good he is in this episode of Pro Tekken History. Here we go. Despite how complex I just hyped Yoshimitsu up to be in the intro, he's actually a surprisingly basic character in Tekken 1. His key moves are the most core Tekken moves you could find. Jabs, a down forward one poke, a down forward two launcher, and generic lows. His unique moves are almost entirely bad. He has an advancing knee that knocks down but is unsafe, his kick strings are either unsafe or duckable, his shark attack looks cool but is extremely unsafe and isn't natural, and he has a full crouch low launch that's pretty good on paper but doesn't have many great setups. You can set it up with his down back 3 low series and theoretically mix it up with while standing too, but Tekken's single backdashes are so strong that opponents can simply backdash, block low and option select the mix up. Yoshimitsu's only good unique moves are his back one high series, which is great combo filler, jails on block and gives a free jab on hit, his down back three low series, which in fairness does still have the mid ender that you could mix up with a full crouch low reasonably well, and he has an extremely fast, good range unblockable sword slash that doesn't do much damage but is a fantastic round ender. However, in a game where a single hit can do explosive damage, Yoshimitsu needs to play extremely well just to chip away at an opponent. Yoshimitsu's block punishment is dire. He only gets single jab for small punishes and his crouch block punishment game is non-existent. That being said, if he's able to punish with a down forward 2 launch, it can well end the game. The death combo off of his down forward 2 is range dependent, tricky and pretty inconsistent, but Yoshi can fairly consistently get 95% with a much easier juggle. The reason why Yoshi is C tier is because he just doesn't have anything going for him in Tekken 1, aside from his high damage off of his launch and his fast unblockable for ending rounds. But it's not really great when you consider that every character has a low crouch jab that's a considerably good round ending tool in its own right. While Yoshi is not the worst character in the game, he suffers horribly against characters with superior range like the Bigs and Heihachi as Yoshi has no safe tools to get in or close distance. There's signs of brilliance for Yoshimitsu, but not in Tekken 1 just yet. Tekken 2 really rounded out Yoshimitsu's move list. His key pokes and launcher are still his best moves, but most of his signature moves originate here. His evasive manji spin, which is extremely useful in Tekken 2 as it makes Yoshimitsu one of the few characters with lateral movement in the game. Yoshi also got his health gaining sit stars that lets him teleport behind the opponent, again extremely useful in Tekken 2 due to the slow turn time. His full crouch low unblockable sword sweep, his fake out sword spin unblockable that's very hard to whiff punish, and 5 different 10 hit combos which include unblockable sword attacks in making Tekken 2 Yoshi one of the few characters in any Tekken where 10 hit combos are a viable strategy. Moving on to block punishment, Yoshi finally got launch properties off of his while standing 2, which rounded out his crouching block punishment. And Yoshi's juggle damage remains extremely high. Yoshi in Tekken 2 is infamous for his crouching spin attack loops. Get the opponent on the ground, pick them up with the spinning kicks, end with a mid kick, run up and repeat. 
However, actually repeating the loop into an infinite is virtually impossible as it requires extremely precise dashes and execution. Tekken 2 Yoshi is a very well-rounded character. The only reason he's B tier is because he doesn't have an automatic win button, unlike some characters such as the top tiers of Bruce, Kazuya and Wang. Yoshi still has a slight range issue as he doesn't have any safe approach tools and his downfall to his very bad range and recovery frames meaning it can be backdashed and whiff punished. It's not a move you can throw out risk free unlike a wind god fist. Yoshi can play at range and threaten to regain life of his sit stance but it requires a stronger sense of timing to pull off safely and or good mental condition of the opponent to make their responses predictable. Yoshi has good matchups against characters he can easily punish. He gets a great punish against Law and Lee's slide with his spin kick loop. He can launch their flip kicks and he's better at range than King. Yoshi has a very bad matchup against characters with parries though, as they can totally shut down his offense. Especially female characters with parries, as bizarrely, they can parry Yoshi's sword attacks while male parry characters can't. Still, Yoshi is a very well rounded character in Tekken 2. This is the Tekken where Yoshimitsu starts to get a little bit unique. He's still got all of his great pokes, mix-ups and his fantastic down forward to launch which now has more range, but all of his new moves are very quirky and it takes a while to figure out how to use them practically. That being said, that doesn't mean he got bad new moves. He got the flea stance which can be a really nice struggle filler and tech trap. He got his down forward 1-2 to stone fist string which is the perfect string to mix up with door knocker or set up his crouch mix ups. And he got his iconic flash, a powerful instant launch that acts like a parry. Functionally, Yoshi hasn't changed much from Tekken 2 to 3 but his toolkit works really well in Tekken 3. Yes, you're reading that right. Yoshi's Fubuki, or his forward forward 4 jumping knee is a 7 frame punish when executed perfectly, realistically an 8 frame punish. Aside from that, Yoshi's block punishment is really nice in Tekken 3. It's not listed but the flash can be a punish to very specific moves and can be used to interrupt strings. Yoshimitsu players who study every character to find out when they can slip in a flash to punish overly lax opponents are separated from the wannabes. Yoshi's Juggle damage is great too, but he still has some consistency issues with slap view silly juggles, range and axis issues, but his optimal juggles are very damaging. What makes Yoshimitsu great is that he's just one of the few characters in the game with a positive matchup against Ogre, as Ogre cannot get in against Yoshi because of the flash. It option selects Ogre's attacking strings and advancing moves. He's still a huge threat with very powerful and scary moves, but Yoshi is an exceptional counter to the best character in the game. Yoshi also has a decent matchup against Ling. He struggles to stop her from moving, but he can just threaten to regain life and force her to approach. Yoshi does not have ideal matchups against the Mishimas, however. He's great at flashing the EWGFs, so it's certainly not a totally losing matchup, but his damage output and move quality isn't quite as strong as the Mishimas, so he needs to outplay them to win. That being said, Tekken 3 is a fantastic showing for the Yo-Man. Yoshimitsu in Tag 1 remains a very strong and competent character. He matches with Tag's faster pace really well as he can be played a few different ways. Aggressive rush down with threatening mids like down forward 2, down forward 4, forward forward 2, forward forward 4 and his new sidestep 1 counter hit launcher as well as the damage 3 string, door knocker and more 
or a heavier mix-up type of character, leaning heavily on his crouch mix-up tools like his full crouch sweep and unblockable full crouch sweep, as well as Oki sit-ups like Flea, the helicopter, and the shark attack to condition and frustrate an opponent, which is when they're suspect to flash. Naturally, our hybrid style works equally well too. It's up to the player how safe or how wild they want to play. The drawbacks of either being that safe play can be lame and predictable, and wild play being highly risky. It's important to keep the opponent constantly guessing in neutral, when you tag in, when they tag in, when you're enforcing a mix-up, when you're moving. Yoshi's Okazeme off of his juggles is so good it's usually worth going for, but his key toolkit is so strong there's not much need to branch out from that if you don't feel like it. The newer players might be surprised at how solid Yoshimitsu is in the earlier Tekken games. He definitely has his tricks, but his game plan and key moves to build that game plan around are his core, fundamental Tekken as it gets. Although Yoshimitsu prefers to be a reserve character rather than a point character for reasons we'll get to soon, his tag launches are fantastic. By that I mean his down forward 2 tag launcher is fantastic. It's almost like a one button middle wind god fist of how much range it has. Yoshi is best as a reserve character because he's the only character in the game to gain Netsu after his tag partner takes 4 hits regardless of the character rather than the normal 5. If a point character has a good tag launcher, Yoshi can deal Mishima levels of juggle damage. Yoshimitsu had a lot of usage in Tag 1, especially early in the game's lifespan. Both the winner, Korea's Suk Dong Min, and Japan's Hayashida used Yoshimitsu at the 2000 Tekken Tag World Championships. These two players swapped the most during the tournament, although Yoshimitsu and Lei were Suk's primary team during that tournament. Three players also used Yoshimitsu at the inaugural Electric Cancel. Joe King, who made Yoshimitsu along with King, Shafi, who placed third, and Tom Hilfiger, who was the winner. Joe King also used Yoshimitsu along with King to place third at Electric Cancel 2 and tied fifth at Electric Cancel 5. Finally, two other Yoshimitsu mains placed with the character Q Dog, with Yoshi and Eddie placing third at Electric Cancel 2 and Zoe with Yoshi and Julia placing third at Extravaganza 7. It's notable that Yoshi's usage declined in Tag's later years, likely as players stuck to their main teams rather than swapping so much. Although Yoshi never placed at an EVO, he had a lot of strong placements all throughout Tag 1. Before we get to the next game, I want to let you guys know that Throw Tech in History and my channel now has a Patreon. As much as I love making these videos, unfortunately the return of investment I get on them is not exactly sustainable right now. With enough support on Patreon, I can afford to invest more time into content creation and make videos more frequently and higher quality. There are tons of bonuses in the different Patreon tiers including sneak peeks at new videos, patron credits and a patron character vote. That's right, I'm running character votes for patrons, so if you'd like to see your favourite character reviewed next, we can make it happen. Until the 30th of June, there's also a founding bonus, so if you're a fan of the series and you believe in the channel, you can get special recognition as being one of the first people to support me forever. There's a Discord server and tons more, so if you're able to, feel free to check it out in the description below. Thank you for listening, now let's get back to the video. Let me explain why Yoshimitsu suddenly turned from a very balanced character in Tekken 3 and Tag to a subpar character in Tekken 4. The movement nerf and focus on high progressive range 1 to 0 gameplay badly hurt Yoshimitsu's game plan, as he can't create the distance to utilize what were some of his best range attacks like the Soul Poke, the Buki Knee, Long Range Uppercut, and Sidestep 1. In Tekken 4, a magic 4 and strong jabs are more important than a good whiff punishing launcher, but Yoshi's jabs and his standing 4 are really, really bad. Not only this, but Yoshimitsu's key power got nerfed too. While Yoshi's move stealing flash is very memorable and quirky, 
it's not as practically useful as the full launch flash was. Maybe it was changed because Yoshimitsu's keep out would have been too strong in the poke heavy meta, but without it, there's nothing threatening Yoshi has to stop the game's best pokers from wailing on him. Tekken 4 is where Yoshimitsu's stigma as one of the worst characters in the series began. Yoshimitsu got a nice 14 frame block punisher off of both standing and crouching with his up forward 3 knee, one of his few legitimate Tekken 4 buffs. Moving on to juggles, off of most launches you can end with a door knocker to hit the opponent grounded for a free mix up or a guaranteed unblockable slash, which does decent damage for Tekken 4 standards. One place where Yoshi does excel at is at the wall, as Yoshi's Fubuki knee is fast enough to get a wall splat after a wall push, totaling 50 damage or more depending on the axis. Yoshi is also one of the best characters at pulling off consistent infinite juggles on stages like the arena or underground with his slap you silly wall carry. As mentioned before, Yoshi struggles against poke heavy characters in Tekken 4, and it just so happens all the best characters in the game are poke heavy. I'm not sure exactly how Yoshi can fight these tough matchups as the amount of tournament footage with Yoshimitsu in is very barren. Probably a good indicator that most players ended up picking a better character. That being said, Yoshimitsu did have two known tournament placements. One from Q-Dog, placing 4th at Electric Council 4.5 and one from Tom Hilfig, using Yoshi as a secondary character at Electric Council 5. Not Yoshimitsu's best showing compared to Tekken Tag, but at least he was a usable character and got some placements. Never mind what I just said, Yoshi's got him pretty decent again. He is a bit tricky now. He has a lot of moves that are technically unsafe, but due to distance or follow up options, aren't punishable by most of the cast or have very complicated defensive mix ups. Yoshi's basic poking style is still here. His down forward one strings, down forward four quick mid poke, his sidestep launches and full crouch mix ups are all still here and as strong as ever, and he got his damaging flashback. Two of Yoshi's best new additions are his Dragonfly stance, which has mid and low launches, as well as tracking options, and his forward 3 plus 4 ball charge. This move is technically minus 10, but due to teleport options, the punish is a mix up. The ball charge is really strong in neutral as a whiff punishing tool with Oki options after, and as a juggle ender, which we'll talk more about right now. Yoshi's struggles do still slightly suffer from consistency issues. The Slap You Silly juggle filler is finicky depending on the range and axis. However, Yoshi has a lot of nice juggle options. You can end with a knee for quick positional advantage or the ball charge for great Oki. You can also forego the Oki and go into the assist stance for a free 10 health regain minimum. Yoshi can also go for wall carry ender and Yoshi's wall damage and pressure is very nice in Tekken 5. He has a few options. The Stone Fists, assuming you don't finish the Stone Fists and fall over, have excellent Okazemi at the wall and line up excellently with a down forward one due to Stone Fist wall carry option, but you can also forego the Oki for max damage with a flea wall juggle. The only problem is that like the slaps in neutral, the flea juggle can sometimes misalign and deal less than optimal damage, so you need to be careful with your timing. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a ton of information on Yoshi's matchups for Tekken 5, so I'll keep this section brief and only mention some intuitive thoughts I personally had. Yoshi starts becoming a considerably complex character from this game onwards, so it's hard to really say what are good and bad matchups for him. As Kurt and Bruce shouldn't be a problem for Yoshimitsu, as his flash should be a lot of S3 mix ups and approach tools, and the sword and knee means Asuka struggles to parry Yoshi, while Marduk has always been a bad matchup against Yoshi. His tackle can be flashed and floated out of on the action, and Yoshi can even flash Valet to those stance options if a Yoshi player has a hard read. Where Yoshi would struggle is against characters with great counter hit tools and good whip punishes like most of the top tiers. 
Yoshi relies a lot on his full crouch sweeps to open opponents up, which the top tiers can easily backdash and whiff punish, or just block and punish. Characters like Steve and Fane are some of the few in the game who can also effectively chase Yoshi down. Only one tournament result for Yoshi Mitsu in Tekken 5. Brian H, the famous fighting game player, used Yoshimitsu as a secondary to get second at NEC6. Other top Yoshimitsu players almost certainly got strong results, but nothing has been well archived. You know the story. Perhaps this is a sign that Yoshi is starting to get too complex for reliable tournament play. We'll see. Yoshi got quite a few changes in DR. His Dragonfly stance got slightly toned down as the low no longer launches on normal hit, but he did get the Dragonfly unbreakable grab, which is really more mentally damaging to the player than physically damaging to the character. Some of Yoshi's key moves like up forward 3, side step 1 and side step 2 got nerfed, but kinds of nerfs like range and pushback which means they can't just be thrown out anymore. But Yoshi's two biggest buffs were firstly a very strong new low in down forward 1 plus 2 2 that does a grip of damage, is borderline seeable but hard to react to a neutral and really adds a little bit of danger to Yoshi's low game now. And then secondly a very evasive meditation stance cancel in med back 3 plus 4 that feels a lot like Lay's back turn step in terms of quick evasion but it's arguably stronger due to the passive healing that the stance gives. All things considered, Yoshi is a much more consistent and well-rounded character in DR, and this combined with strongness for almost all of T5's old top tiers means Yoshi is a very solid B tier in DR. Yoshimitsu got a few placements in DR, all in America. Antonio Carmona, placing 4th at EVO North 07, got Soy Milk with a zero in Soy, very interesting name, making top 8 at Electric Cancel 6.5, and Suda African Mitsu, making top 8 at EVO West 07. No top placements for Yoshi at major events though, and this is likely still due to his complexity. Possible match set point here for Just Rain James. Oh, you can't grab. break it. Again, one of the better airborne grabs in this game. Unable to float, will hit regular, and you cannot hop kick it. Oh, he got him with the tricks. 3-3 three, three again, that should be it. Again, great, seven golden letters, a great display, and a character that's completely underused in this game. Tekken 6 completely transformed Yoshimitsu. He gained two new stances, the Kinto stance, which is mostly used in juggles, and his no sword stance, which we'll talk more about soon. With Tekken 6, Namco decided to standardize a lot of things in the series. 8 frame jabs standardized to 10 frames, no moves faster than jabs with rare exceptions, no more normal hit launching sweeps that aren't extremely reactable, and so on. Yoshimitsu was more affected by Tekken 6's homogenization than any other character. To try to compensate for this, Namco gave Yoshimitsu an insane number of new moves which dramatically increased his complexity to crazy levels but most of these new moves are simply inferior to their old versions. Yoshi's old Fubuki knee is now a launcher, but it's much, much slower, and Yoshi's stuck in back turned after, meaning he's in the guessing game on block, where the safest option is to spin away at the cost of some life. Yoshi's incredible down forward 2 is replaced by a worse down forward 2 2 move. His 4 3 plus 4 ball charge is replaced by a worse move. His normal hit launching 4 crouch sweep has been replaced by a counter hit launching 4 crouch sweep. His down forward 1 mix ups are now locked in while standing 1. The bizarre thing is, all of these old moves are now locked in Yoshi's no sword stance. But in this stance, a lot of Yoshi's best still existent moves, like the sword sweep, the dragon flying flea stances, and more are either completely gone or are considerably worse. T6 Yoshi is two pieces of a good character that you can't use at the same time. Namco totally dropped the ball with Yoshimitsu, who is generally considered one of the bottom five, if not bottom three characters in Tekken 6. 
one of the few improvements Yoshimitsu did get was his new 1-1 one, one and no sword stance 2-1 jab punishes. Not as great as having an 8 frame jab or 7 frame knee punish, but the damage and frames are good. However, these are the only punishes Yoshi gets until 15 frames, which isn't great. Yoshi's juggle potential is pretty good in Tekken 6. He has a lot of good launches, counter hit tools, and NSS specific juggle options. Because there's so many complex juggle options and launches, I'm only showing unique juggle paths. Launches like the flash, sword sweep, counter hit launching sweep, and more just follow the same juggle path as Yoshi's down forward 2 2. The only time Yoshi really feels like a functioning character is when he's got the opponent at the wall. His Oki is nasty with the sword sweep tech catch mixed with a down back three string that keeps the opponent grounded. Some Tekken 7 players might be all too familiar with this mix, which originated in Tekken 6 when the sticky walls were introduced. That being said, Yoshi's wall carry pales in comparison to some of the top tiers like Bruce, Julia and Nina, so actually getting to the wall to start that pressure is a rare gift on most stages. Yoshi is so complex, but it's difficult for me to talk about matchup stuff in a game like Tekken 6, so I'm going to spend this time to talk about how Yoshi is best played. His tools aren't bad, they're just very diverse and niche in use. Because of this, Yoshi's game plan relies a lot on conditioning and guessing right on Okazemi. Yoshi plays best when the opponent is hesitant to approach or start offense. If they're playing on the defensive, reacting rather than acting, that's when Yoshi can start his crouch mix-ups, dragonfly mix-ups, bring in his fairly respectable standing lows and enforce his great Okazemi game along with his massive bag of tricks. Yoshi players want you to look at the sword and keep looking at it, because all the time we're trying to predict the unpredictable Yoshi, you're not enacting your own game plan. You thought I was kidding about Yoshi being banned in Tekken 6? He only has one known tournament result in Tekken 6. Just Fame James mains Laws in T6 as Laws a top 5 character, but he used Yoshi in a single match against Little Margin's King. Law doesn't have many great ranged options in T6 that they can stop King's suboptimal approach game or his grab game or crouch mix ups, so an evasive mix up heavy character like Yoshi was ideal. But that's the only result Yoshi had. Tekken 6 was definitely his lowest point. It's never over. Oh boy. Okay, there you go. Nice hop kick. See what I mean? James party's a little too hard towards the end of the night. Okay. Oh wow. I like that. He's formulating. Oh yes. Oh, oh, oh. the Batman backhand. Uh bound. Wow, look at this combo. Didn't go back to the wall. That's what he was trying to do. Wrong punish. Ouch. Tag crash? Raw tag or tag crash? Tag crash. <gasps> oh, wow. He's too far away. Good wow, record. no whiff punish. Good recognition. Oh, man. No, he wasn't close enough. Classic mix Shining up. black. The yo man. Could this be another Harry Carey miracle? Oh, yeah. Don't let him get it. Nice. Nice again. Oh, he's not. Oh, ready and he takes it. That's the end of that. Yoshi hasn't changed very much in Tag and Tag 2. He's gained a few new additions, most notably his back 2 2, which is a 14 frame mid high block punisher and a great with punisher 2, as well as follow up strings from his down 2 2. A high that's great for wall carry and a mid that's a bound, but these moves can be used in neutral for a surprise factor sparingly. Otherwise, Yoshi's pretty much the same as he ever was. But whereas in Tekken 6, he was two sides of a coin that can never both be facing up at the same time, in Tag 2, its weaknesses can be covered by his tag partner. This is the reason why Yoshi is C-tier, as Yoshi can be an excellent second character. Just coming in for certain matchups or to try and condition and mix an opponent up midway through a round. The point character with stronger neutral tools can do the heavy lifting. Yoshi can just come in during an advantageous situation Ideally, pull into his bag of tricks, throw some stuff out, and dip again. At least that's unless you're pairing him with another character that has dubious neutrals such as Lei or Safina. But all things considered, Yoshi Mitsu's strengths shine a lot brighter in Tag 2 and his weaknesses can be minimized, which allows him to perform at a much higher level than his tiering might make you think. Yoshi really likes his back 2 2 block punisher. It gives a free tag or excellent Oki, as unlike other knockdown moves, the opponent can't quick tech or quick back roll. 
Yoshi also has a lot of good tag launches that can be used in certain situations. Yoshi can also be used with a lot of different tag partners. Characters like Lei, Xiao Yu and Safina really emphasize the weird mix-up game. But Yoshi can also be paired with Mishimas, Law, Paul, even characters that don't like Yoshi such as Raven or Brian, so that Yoshi can complement these neutral focused characters and add a different element to their game. These results are what I meant when I said that Yoshi can perform past his tiering. There's no doubt Yoshi is a below average character in Tag 2, but that doesn't matter when he's a secondary character to a point but has very strong neutral. This is what Just Frame James did to consistently place all over America between 2013 and 2016 with his trademark Law and Yoshimitsu team. James' top placements during this time include three top eights at three final rounds in a row, a second place at SCR 2014, and a very respectable tied fifth at EVO 2013. Other players who placed in this time include Clint at KIT 2014, who primarily uses bears but has a secondary Yoshi and Safina team, Kyoko Manji, who placed tied fifth at Ultimate Tournament 15 and third at Red Fight District 4 with his Raven Yoshi and Ninja team. And finally, the up-and-coming Kane and Trench placed 4th at Lions Den 3 in the UK with his Yoshi and Miguel team. And spoiler alert, you're going to be seeing a lot of Kane in the next part. So good. Nice block. So oh! My goodness! How? That is crazy! Kane and Trench, aka the Magician, with all the answers here. And now John Ding is on tournament life. Tournament life round, man. This is bad. Dude, that's Taylor crazy. Trench is playing so solid this game. Look at this. Oh, gets hit by the sights of three for four. Okay, John Ding's not over. Not over for him yet. Nice punish there. John Ding only has half bar left. Yes. Sustained Berlin second clash. What's gonna happen? Kane and Trench trying to increase his life early. Oh, this is dangerous stuff here. John Ding might be in trouble against the wall. Gets hit on where to go. This is looking bad. And Kane and Trench. And Kane and Trench. Yoshi is finally back to his old strength in Tekken 7. Namco gave him back his old down forward 2 in his regular stance and gave him parry properties during the startup of his Kincho stance. He also has a great power crush in forward 3 plus 4 that's only minus 10 on shallow block, a great rage drive and he's one of the only characters with two rage arts. A normal rage art that's used to end juggles and a flash rage art that is a full launcher if the opponent attacks Yoshi during his active frames and has 75% damage reduction compared to a normal rage arts 50 percent yoshi also got his down forward one strings back the door knocker the down forward one two to stone fist and a new down forward one four that's a natural combo yoshi is by no means a perfect character or close to overpowered in any way except baby is worky but yoshi is in a very very good spot in tekken 7. Yoshi has a ridiculous amount of launches and juggle options, so I'm just showing the max damage and most common stuff and I'll be talking a lot to cover the time. Let's start with Yoshi's block punishment. It's very strong in Tekken 7. Yoshi has a great 10 frame punish with 1-1, a 13 frame punish in down forward 1-4 for the first time, a great 14 frame punish in back to 2 with options, his rage drive is a 14 frame launcher and yes, 15 frame launchers for standing and crouching. Talking about juggles, Yoshi has so many Oki options off of his juggles, including with his Kincho stance, Moonsault Slayer Unblockable, Instant War Standing 4 resets, and more. There are huge guides and videos that cover everything, so I won't go into detail, but there's flavors of Oki that Yoshi means can take their pick with. And then we have Yoshi's wall mix-ups. The down back 3 string and the unlockable sword sweep is an outrageous mix-up. You can add crouch dash 1 for the flip over. And very sharp Yoshi players can actually react to a tech roll with the sword sweep and completely keep a player locked to the wall for the whole round. Yoshi also has long leg and medium body juggles and multiple juggle routes of varying difficulty to try. The juggles you're seeing now are consistent but high execution and tight, so there are other options for newer players. I'm only covering max damage wall juggles as well, but making over other wall juggles only work with certain carry options like 4 3 plus 4 to flea mix ups, and other wall juggles are better for setting up Okazemi. In terms of matchups, Yoshi generally struggles against characters who have a lot of reach or have good magic force, as it's harder for Yoshi to poke against these characters risk free. Otherwise, Yoshi is really playing more of a player matchup than a character matchup. 
and the stage plays a big role in what Okazeme he's going for. Yoshi has an especially good matchup against Josie as there's plenty of holes in her strings to fit a flash in. But really there are so many complexities in character matchups but it's hard to summarize it so let's move on to results. 2017 was Kane and Trench's breakout year. He established himself as the best player in the UK and at the time the second best player in Europe with only Tishimon having consistently stronger results. Kane won Tatakai Holland, placed 4th at VSF, top 8 at Warsaw and 4th in Paris in the 2017 season and in the 28th season he placed 3rd at the Coliseum in Rome and 3rd at ADF Team 9 in Spain. Kane's consistency is due to his amazing defensive solid playstyle. He has incredible reactions and shows how Yoshimitsu's tools can be used to expertly play Tekken neutral. He only dives into Yoshi's bag of tricks when he has momentum or to catch an opponent off guard and steal momentum back. Two other Yoshi players score top 8s in this time. Poland's Tenshimitsu making top 8 at Warsaw tying with Kane the Vet event and Japan's Kairi who made top 6 at the 2018 Taiwan Challenger. Yoshimitsu got a lot of subtle buffs in Season 2. A new Kintra transition from more standing 4, new counter hit launches from certain moves and more smaller buffs that would take too long to list out here. Rounding out Yoshimitsu as a character even more and giving him more flexibility which is exactly what Yoshi should be. Only Kane and Trench plays with Season 2 Yoshi, likely because these Season 2 buffs aren't enough to make new players pick Yoshi up. Kane placed 2nd at Headstone for 2019 and 7th at Fighter Games Challenge 2019 in Poland. Yoshi continues to get more and more buffs and virtually no nerfs in Season 3. You saw the new Kin back to one move used a lot in the stable juggle section, it's an extremely useful part of Yoshi's optimal juggle game now. The only reason Yoshi hasn't gone up to A tier is because other characters got even more crazy power creep buffs than Yoshi, but in terms of tournament, he hasn't been so effective and consistent since Tekken Tag, maybe more so now than ever. Kane continued to place, getting second at Berlin Tekken Clash 2019. He wasn't able to travel very much in 2019, but still almost qualified for the World Finals despite that. Korea's iMusician also had two placements in 2019, a top 8 at Rev Manger 2019 and a very respectable fourth at the TWT LCQ in Bangkok. What do you know, Yoshimitsu got even more buffs in Season 4. His new Kin Stance Sword Sweep is very powerful, but he didn't get many other changes. Yoshimitsu might just be flying under the radar with how strong he is in the current day version of Tekken 7, but whether he'll attract any strong new players compared to new DLC characters and the other, more evidently strong characters in Tekken 7's massive cast remains to be seen. And that's it! So, how strong was Yoshimitsu in Tekken's long history? Looking back, Yoshimitsu has actually been consistently solid for almost all of Tekken's entirety. If you look at many top players tier lists in different Tekkens throughout history, Yoshi will almost always be at the very bottom. But looking objectively at Yoshi's strengths and past tournament results, it's clear that he's almost always been a very well-rounded and competent character. It just takes a very proficient, diligent player to master Yoshimitsu's intricacies and find a style that is consistent and effective in competition. Make no mistake, Yoshimitsu is a serious threat in Tekken and the future looks bright for the Bionic Space Ninja. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe and follow me on Twitter as the next character bowls for YouTube and Twitter will be coming on these platforms soon. And if you want to support these videos my Patreon is in the description. Once I get to 10 patrons I'll be running the first patron character vote. So if you want to see your favourite Tekken character reviewed on the series becoming a patron will be the best place to make your voice heard. This series and other video projects I have will be running long into the future. So if you like my stuff and want to help me grow, you can become a founding patron right now and get special recognition in the patron credits forevermore. The founding bonus is only running until the end of June, so check it out if you like. That's all I've got. Thanks so much for watching until the end and see you in the next video. Take care.